chapter 3, lesson 3, is dividing by a one-digit number. So, again, in grade 3, we learned how to divide. Okay, so this is a continuation of grade 3. The difference is the numbers are bigger. So, in grade 3, we remember that the process starts with division. Then, we multiply. Then, we subtract. Then, we bring down. Okay, as a tool for division, we also should remember that the multiplication tables are also important. And if we can't divide it all out, then there could be remainders. So there are some pro problems that will not have remainders. There are others that will. So to demonstrate the lesson, we will go to pages 70 and 71. Okay, so on page 70, number 1, it says to divide. Okay, for these problems, it's already written in that form. There are problems that are in word form. So therefore, we need to know that this, the bigger number, will always be inside the division sign. Okay, so we'll start with letter A. So if I look at 7 divided by 6 is 1. Okay, so that's the divide. Then we multiply. So that means that's 1 times 6 is 6. Then we subtract, which gives us 1. Then we bring down the 5. So then we repeat the process all over again. So 15 divided by 6 is 2. Which means when we multiply 2 by 6, that will give us 12. And then we subtract. So that means this is 3. Bring down again the 3. So if we divide 33 by 6, again, the easiest is to count by 6 until you reach 33 without going over. And that would be 5. So that means that's 30. And then we subtract again which is 3, then we bring down again, and this is 36. Again, we divide. So 36 divided by 6 is 6, which means this will be 36, which ends the process because we would have gotten a 0 and there would not have been anything to bring down. Okay, so another example to show is letter D. So 16 divided by, sorry, we start with 1 and we divide by 8. Cannot be. So the kids should know. So 16 divided by 8 would be 2. So 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract. So again, divide, multiply, subtract, and then bring down. Okay, so common problem of the kids is when they see this, 4 divided by 8, they don't know what to do. So again, we need to remind our kids, there's no 8s in 4. So this should be 0. Okay, or another way is if they start counting by 8, there's no, it starts with 8, doesn't start with 4. So there's none. So if we multiply, that will be 0. Then we subtract, that's still a 4. And then we bring down, that would be 49. So 49 divided by 8 would be, if you count by 8, it'll be 6, which gives us 48. When you subtract, gives you 1. Since there's nothing else to bring down, then that means that will serve as our remainder. So the quotient is 206 and the remainder is 1. Okay, and finally, problem number three on page 71 says divide 6,144, divide 6,144 by 6. So in the earlier problems, it's been written computationally already. So here we have to write, so this is 6,144 divided by 6. So if we begin the division process, divide. That would be 1. 
multiply, that will be 6. Subtract, that will be 0. Bring down, that will be 1. And then divide again. So 1 divided by 6. Again, that's nothing. So there are no 6s in 1. So when we multiply, that's still a 0. And then this is a 1. Bring down is 4. Divide again. So divide 14 by 6 is 2. Again, if we count 6, 12. That's 2 without going over. So that's 2. That will be 12. We subtract. That will be 2. And then we bring down again. Then the process repeats. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. Again, if we count 6, 12, 18, 24. 4. Then we multiply. That will be 24. Then we subtract. So we could end with just leaving it blank as I did here, but we could also leave it with a 0. Either case, they're the same. So in this case, there's no remainder because there's nothing else that we can bring down. That concludes lesson 3 of chapter 3, which also concludes our chapter and also our first module. See you in the next module.